What's the word, y'all? I keep it in the buck. I had no plan on uploading today um, because, we're, you know, we're getting closer to Thanksgiving. I was going to take some days off. But my mentions this morning was crazy. I guess Bleach Report put out an article. They got people sick to their stomach. And we haven't reacted to a BR article in a minute. So I thought, let's see what it's about. It's NBA's 24 under 24 ranking. It's got people mad. Uh, so let's get into it. Y'all know this. I am a BR employee, but that's never stopped me from um, disagreeing with an author or writer about their opinions about basketball. That's what sports is about, right? It's about agreeing and disagreeing about different things. And yes, we are somewhat taking a bait because when someone puts out an article like this that it seemed to be controversial, some of it, a lot of it is due to the clicks, trying to get the clicks up, trying to get people reacting to it and talking about it. And yes, we did that. But so many, when I tell you there are so many people that sent me this article, um, I, I felt like it was my obligation to talk about these things. So it is the 24 under 24 ranking Evan Mobley enters the top 10 Luka loses number one spot interesting so this is their second edition of this they had one uh, right before the season started and for this one this is the older one they basically based on track record um, what they've already done and kind of their opinion about them um, around the league so I'm just showing you what they look like before and then we're going to react to the newer version of it. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with anything in this part of it. Because who cares? This is before the season started. But let's get to the right now. But they did switch it up. This one is not about reputation or what they've done in the past. But more about how they've been playing this season. Now that the season is underway, the latest version and others doing the season will function more as a ranking based on how they're playing at the moment. Big stars with slow starts. Talking about Trey Young and, and Jason Tatum. We get some benefit of the doubt. But even those names fell a few spots. Okay, that's... That's... I, but the thing that makes this bad is because it can be both. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to pick one of or the other. You can, based on what they've done and how they're playing right now, and then still show love to the younger rookies who might not have a track record, if that makes sense. This article, based on this sentence alone, these two sentences or whatever... It's telling me this is about to be really, really bad. Davion Mitchell is 23 years old. And though his defense has been pretty good, and basically what we expected from him, the offense has been bad. Uh, shooting atrocious, 26% from three on, on four attempts per game. But they're still saying that he's 24th. Now, once we get done with this article, let's we're going to go through players that didn't make the article that are having better seasons than Davion so far and also have a better track record. Number <laughs> number 23 on the list, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, I, I'm, I already want to click off. Because, yes, Shea Gilgis Alexander's numbers are down this year. They, yeah, they're mentioning it right here. 40% from the field. Last year he was at 50. 41 from three. This year he's shooting about uh, uh, 32. Yes, his percentages are down. But, okay, who's next? I... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm close to walking off set and just saying we done. You're trying to tell me so far, based on what we've seen from, even if it's just this season alone, Shea Gills Alexander has been worse than Taylor Horton Tucker. Now, Taylor Horton Tucker had like three really good games out of the gate. And since then, he hasn't done anything. So there's a tweet from StatMuse six days ago when Talon Horton Tucker started off the season um, in the first three games, he was averaging 23 points per game. And in the next three games, he was averaging literally three points per. Literally three points per. But like, I can't, I can't watch the basketball that I watch and say so far this season, Horton Tucker has been better, better than Gilgis Alexander. I do like that they both have hyphenated last names that make them both cool. But come on, bro. That's, that's, really wild to me Shea is three years older but but they're not saying in the intro that any of that matters right they're not saying any of that matters this is supposed to be strictly based on what they say up here how they're playing in the moment in the moment and this was published today so they know that the last three games of the moment half of Horton Tucker's season he's averaging three points per game I'm, on, I'm only at 22 of 24 I'm all, and I'm already really upset Next, we have Jaron Jackson Jr. He's hit some big shots, especially recently. Recently, This is what this picture's from, game-winning shots. The team is significantly better with him on the court than off the court, but the team is still struggling as far as getting stops and things like that. I'm not really worried about Jaron Jackson Jr. being 21 right here. Should it be higher? Should it be lower? It's up to you. Franz Wagner at 20. He's averaging 12 points per game, four rebounds, two assists, and a steal. 
He's shooting um, about league average from three on four attempts. He's been having a really, really good rookie season. I want y'all to hear me say that because I've watched a lot of Franz Wagner. So he has surprised the heck out of me as somebody that actually watched him a little bit in college because my boy Mike Smith was playing alongside him. I'm impressed with how much he, he's been able to impact um, the team in Orlando. But look who he's ahead of. Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter, since he's been added to the starting lineup of the Atlanta Hawks, um, they've been amazing. So I cannot deny the fact that Kevin Herter deserves to be on this list. Is he is he too high? I just keep comparing it to like Shea. I keep comparing it to Shea, who's three spots below. And I'm like, yeah, that might mean that Kevin Herter is a little bit too high. My boy Reese is here. Um, he's been really solid, really consistent this season. And Reese is here, Davion is here, and and I'm guessing De'Aaron's going to be somewhere on this list. They have three players under the age of 24 on their list. was a good thing, but again, Sacramento is struggling. DeAndre Aiden has fallen. So going into the season, he was eighth on their list. And I wouldn't say that he's playing any worse than what he was last year or any any worse than what our expectations were, but he failed. Like, yeah, he missed he missed a chunk of the season, but so has, you know, other players on his list. Darius Garland at 16. Number 15 is Cole Anthony. Y'all can argue in the comment section, who would you rather have? Both players have been very good this season. Um, their highs have been super high, and you can see why teams want them to be starting point guards of their team in the future. Um, so shout out to both of them. 14 is Kay Cunningham. Um, started off slow, obviously, and since then he's been revving it up. He's been able to hit big time. They were calling him uh, Clutch Cade because he was he found a way to impact the game late in some of these games for Detroit and help them win some games uh, since he's been in the lineup. Clutch Cade there. De'Aaron Fox at number 13. Number 12 is Jared Allen. Okay. Okay. I just, I just don't know how to feel about this because... Even though they try to tell you in the beginning that this is clearly based on how they're playing in the moment, the list would suggest otherwise in some places, and then they stick to their guns in other places. It doesn't make sense. Scotty Barnes, shout out to him. Um, and then number 10, oh, I thought number 10 was going to be um, Evan Mobley because in the, in the article it says he reached the top 10. I thought maybe he was going to be at number 10, but number 10 is actually, actually Miles Bridges. Who's been obviously he's been um, one of the most improved player candidates. He's been really good. Um, his highs have been really high. He's had a couple, just a few duds this season, which tells me that the production of Miles Bridges is probably um, going to be consistent to the entire year. There were 20 games in, and maybe he's got like three or four games with his head duds, and every other part he's been really consistent. Number nine on the list is Trey Young. Number eight is Tatum. Number seven is Mobley. Okay, so th this is what's confusing to me. Mobley, and right now, before his injury, he was my rookie of the year based on what he had done in the first, what, 15 or so games of his NBA career. Unfortunately, he's out two to four with that injury. Both Tatum and Trey have found their groove recently. Both of their teams have been winning. Trey Young has been able to, to weather the storm as far as the no foul baiting and get back to the version of him or close to the version of him that we saw be an all-star start a few years ago. This is very weird. They didn't, they didn't, I mean, I guess age has to 100% play a part in this person's ranking. They didn't mention it before, but the fact that Evan Mobley is 20 and he's doing what he does, that's the argument, I guess, over, over Tatum, who's been averaging 30 points per game in the last five games or so. I, I, Tyler Hero's number six. Number five is Tyrese Maxey. Number four is Ant-Man. Number three is LaMelo. Number two is Luka. And number one is John Morant. This is this is bad. And it's mostly bad because the inconsistencies in it is is literally making me Google some players' name of some players' ages to see if they aged out. Like I was like, Bam's not there, but Bam just turned 24. Yeah, I I hate it that y'all wanted me to go through that. That was not fun for me. At like not even not even a little bit. Alright, before we get out of here, um I went to the article because you can read comments. People can leave comments on the BR app apparently. And um, I didn't really know that until right now. The top comment says, stopped after seeing THC over SGA. Agre I, I was close to doing the same thing, my boy. People sometimes exaggerate how bad the articles are, but this one is actually terrible. Max and Hero over Trey and Tatum. Yeah, that is a bit wild. I know I glossed over it, but yes, that is a bit wild considering those two players are the best players on playoff teams. Seeing TAC over SGA made me irrationally angry. 
The worst article I've read in my time on BR. SGA and THT are literally two different levels of prospect. One is already a star and huge potential. One is a bench player with starter level potential. You guys forgot Jordan Poole. That's another player. If it was strict, if this was strictly based off this year, Jordan Poole should be on the list, right? You you have to say cons consistent because Jordan Poole has been a better player this year than some of the players on this list, undoubtedly. So the last thing before we get out of here, when I see a list that says like 25 under 25, 24 under 24, my immediately thought, my immediate thought is like, we have to be ranking them based off potential plus what we've already seen from them. I, I try to think about it like if I'm starting a franchise right now and I can only pick from players under the age of 24, like this article is, who am I selecting? And if we got to pick number 23, Shea Gilgis Alexander would not still be on the board. He wouldn't. Um, Jason Tatum would not be on the board at pick number eight. Eight, bro? Trey Young at nine? All right, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Am I bugging or the person that wrote this bugging? Am I misinterpreting what they're trying to put out? I've read every single word of this article. I read it. And, and, the, and the pauses between the video, I was reading to try to get a grasp of what they were trying to say here. And I still don't understand.